Yeah, good evening, everyone. And we're joined by President of Basketball Operations, Brad Stevens. And we're going to take questions for Brad, please. First question is from John Corrales. Hey, Brad, just uh, on the uh, drafting of Davison, what's, what's, what was the thought process in, in selecting him and what's the plan? Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about all the plans and everything else later, but obviously he's a guy that we've seen all year long, uh, very young, um, very explosive. That's pretty obvious. Um, has the ability to get inside the paint and make plays and has some things that he'll have to improve on, but um, has a lot of physical tools, um, a good competitor. Recording and, in uh, progress. And obviously I think played, you know, in a, in a, in a really good program for really good coaches. Um, and so we're looking forward to getting him up to Boston. Any additional questions for Brad? Adam Himmelsbach. Hey, Brad. Um, well, you just kind of, I, I know this year was a little bit different than um, most years other than last year, of course. But uh, what was the approach going to the night? Was there a time you guys thought you might try to do anything bigger? Or was it pretty, did you have a good sense all along? It was probably going to be a pick that you're going to use. Yeah, I mean, the cost for moving up was just too, too much for where we are. Um, and, uh, you know, whether that was into the, 20s or even the 30s or or even the low 40s for us it was okay we've we've got a good list of guys that we're comfortable with um and as the draft continued um and it became obvious that you know we had two or three guys still on our board there in the last couple of picks to choose from um you know felt pretty good about it you know tonight was about finding somebody that we could invest in that we could put a lot of time into that we could help um grow in their young career and hopefully um, help them, you know, help JD in particular, but whoever we picked in that spot get better and really start their career off on the right foot with an investment from a staff and an organization um, for the long term. So we, we weren't looking for anybody necessarily that was going to come in and, and change the game for our team at 53. Um, and so, you know, we, 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 we talked about moving up, but parting with, um, you know, significant players on our team or parting with um, draft assets that you can use with these TPEs and the trade deadline and those type of things didn't make much sense. Jared Weiss. With JD, he seems to have incredible pop and athleticism and speed. What does he need to learn in order to be able to kind of play with control while also playing at a high speed? Well, I mean, he's, you know, first of all, um, you know, what is it, June? So he's a, he's 12 months removed from high school graduation, right? So he, he's played one year of college basketball at a very high level um, on a good team. And with another, um, you know, with, with guys that were there that were, you know, good playmakers in their own right, um, he had some incredible games. Um, and he had some games where he looked like a freshman, but he also, you know, has, um, you know, consistently competed, consistently carried himself well on the court. And, and, uh, again, like the ability to get into the paint, um, is a, is a hard thing to be able to do in this league. And so whether in transition or off of a ball screen, off an action to be able to get into the paint, and then you learn as time goes on what the right reads are around you and making the right plays and, and some of that comes with experience, but we do think he's got a good feel as far as getting the ball out of his hands quickly and finding the right people, especially on spot ups, very unselfish in that regard. Um, but there are things that he's got to improve as any 19 year old would be, but we're looking forward to helping him do that. That's, that's, that's our task. Bobby Manning. Hey, Brad, I'm, I'm sure you had to cast a pretty wide net with this pick, considering the amount of different ways the draft could go before it gets to you. But just how much did you, you know, personally get to know J.D. and get to see and invest in him a little bit in the preparation process leading up to this? Yeah, I haven't personally spent as much time with him. I, certainly we've had, you know, we've had guys come through. He was not amongst the guys that came through for a draft workout. Um 
but some of that was truncated by our own travels. And some of that was just decisions, you know, made by others where, where they could send. And there's only so many draft workouts these guys can go and do, but we spent a lot of time scouting him in person this year. You know, I went to a practice in October um, and watched him practice at Alabama. We saw several games live as a staff. So we're um, very well versed in, in who he is and what he brings to the table and also what he's got to work on. And, um, but the most important thing right now is how do we help him transition smoothly? This is a, um, you know, it's a big life moment for him. And, and then in a couple of days, you're on a plane to Boston and, you know, you're, you're in a whole new place. And uh, how do we help him really start off on the right foot? Can't wait to get him in summer league practice and get him going. Gary Washburn. Hey, Brad. Um, usually in this spot, besides Tremont, you've taken, you t you've taken maybe guys drafting stash or guys that you knew were, you weren't going to come over for a couple of years. What stood out about JD that he's a he's a one and done? He's a, like you said, he's a kid who literally is doesn't turn twenty. I don't think until October or something. So he's a young kid. What about him said, okay, let's develop this kid as opposed to maybe taking a kid who you might not see for a couple of years? Well, I think we're in a position roster wise where we've got to you know we'll, we've got to evaluate the back end of our roster and decide on the guys that were here, decide on who we can add again via trade or via free agency. But we're in a position roster wise where we can, you know, focus on the development of a young player or two, too. And I think that that's important. You know, we traded the last couple of first round picks. Um, we like the guys that are playing overseas, both Yam and Juhan or, guys that are consistently getting better and we and we think highly of and then jd's you know you all you have to do is turn on a couple minutes of clips and you can see the upside so now it's about you know um making it so that he gets his you know accustomed to the nba game and and he's not going to have you know um barring anything crazy here like he's not going to have a, a ton of pressure to come in and and impact us right away or move the needle for us right away he'll be able to compete for minutes just like everybody else but at the same time like he can he can grow develop and focus his attention on improving and I think that that's really a important place to be for a young player we've got a really good team but he'll be able to put some heat on us um you know with his with his speed on both ends of the floor that um I'm looking forward to last couple of questions first one from Brian Robb Hey, Brad, a um, couple questions for you. First, um, you mentioned, you know, J.D. anticipated him playing in Summer League. Who else on the – do you guys know yet who else on the current roster you would be planning on playing there as well with them? And I guess with that, just the uh, the competition level, you know, for the spots at the end of the bench with these guys, you know, for that group, how much you year to see, you know, everyone kind of compete in that level. Yeah, that'll be great. Summer league practice will be the start of that. You know, um, I think Austin put the list out the other day. That's, if not all, most of who will be playing. And so we're looking forward to that. I know our guys that are, um, you know, have had a full week off now are looking forward to being back in the gym soon and practicing. And, uh, you know, it's turn right back around and get after it. So that'll be good. Brian, you had a follow-up question? Hey, Brett. Uh, additionally, you mentioned, uh, you know, talking about trades tonight and the, the price of moving up. You guys have, you know, a couple of these trade exceptions, one that expires next month. What is the uh, heading into free agency now? What's the process like for you guys, you know, knowing that, you know, evaluating possibilities of that and the making a move of it now versus waiting for possibilities that could come up in a week or two down the road? How How did you kind of gauge that? during the trade landscape talks tonight and how do you kind of approach that going forward heading into free agency? Well, I mean, we've been having these talks for a while now, right? Like when we've got a, we've known who fits into our trade exception and who we might be able to target around the league and, and at least have discussions about, but then it really comes down to costs. And so, you know, if the costs, you know, are, um appropriate then then you know you you continue discussions and if they're not then you table it for now and maybe you return to those later but like 
at the end of the day, you know, the, the trade exception is a tool, but it's not our only avenue. I think, you know, we've got a, the ability to do some small things in free agency with the taxpayer mid-level and, um, you know, and obviously the ability to add minimums. And then, you know, if that thing vanquishes because we don't find the right deal, then we still have two other, you know, TPEs to use towards the trade deadline. So that was one of the things about tonight. We wanted to make sure we were, we were smart about all of our future assets. We're smart about, you know, not shifting our team that, um, you know, without, um, very, very, very obvious, uh, moves that would help us. And so, um, those things didn't present themselves. And so we'll, we'll stay at it to see if we can find some things that help improve us. Final question from Keith Smith. Hey, Brad, on, um, Yam and Yuhan, is there a chance that they're on the regular season roster this year? And then in addition to that, with only the one pick, is there a chance one of the two two-way guys is maybe back on a two-way again next year? Yeah, I mean, everything's everything's fluid right now, right? We can we can do a lot of different things. We can go in a lot of different ways, and, and we'll discuss all that. You know, a great time to discuss all that will be after summer league, after these guys are all here and they all play and they all compete and practice and everything else. There's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts and there's a lot of roster flexibility. And that doesn't include, obviously, again, anybody else that we bring in from the outside that, that you know, we don't even um, aren't even talking about tonight. So we'll see how that all shakes itself out. Got a lot of options. Everybody that you've mentioned, um, you know, as far as positionally are all good players and. And we're looking forward to seeing how that shakes itself out. Thanks very much, Brad. And we'll wrap it up right there. Thank you.